Hello, hello. Can you see me? Can you hear me? Can you let me know? And be kind. How are we all doing? <clears throat> are we all all right? Botrix has correctly joined the channel. Um, there you go, it's on. It's actually on. Yay. Mandy, how are you doing? How's things? You okay? This might look and behave different today. I'm not expecting fantastic things, to be honest. You can see here, yes. Could you hear the um, the beginning e bits as well, or were they completely silent? Is there any echo? Seth, how you doing, bud? How's things? Because of the issues that I've had with um, technology, oh, don't start this fucking focus shit. Um, because of that, I ended up, um, was it yesterday? I can't, I've lost so many, I've lost track of days. Uh, I got, it would have been yesterday, I got Microsoft to remotely connect to my PC and spent three hours trying to fix it. And at the end of it, the woman said, no, it's nothing to do with us. It's an issue with Stream Deck, Elgato Stream Deck. So I've got in contact with them. I've issued a ticket, or I've raised the ticket, rather. Hopefully, they will get back to me fairly soon. Right, so the mic's a bit low. What I don't want to do is start clipping too much, so... See if that's any better. Don't go too high, because otherwise it'll start getting distorted and everything. Um, plus also... I think my voice has been going a bit today. I had a coughing fit this morning. And um, I'm, it's sounding a bit worse for wear. So we'll see how I manage to get through this. If at all. Yeah, but because the stream deck's knackered, I am now having to do everything with hotkeys. And because the hotkeys, they haven't got, like the stream deck has... They haven't got little pictures on the front showing you exactly what each key does. That's one of the joys of the Stream Deck. You program it with what it needs to do. And then you can put a little picture on the front. Or a GIF, an animated GIF if you so wish. Um, so I can tell exactly what everything is. Not now. Now I'm just stuck with the keyboard with letters and numbers on. And I've got to try and remember what everything is. So... Things will go tits up at some point during the stream. Just letting you know. It will happen. Chat on screen keeps disappearing. Told you. There will be issues. There will be issues. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Chat bot, chat bot, chat bot. Widgets, widgets, widgets. Chatty widgets, hide all messages. No, we don't need that on. Link copied. I'm doing this live on the fly here. So, um, properties. Wait, 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 wait. Right, hopefully that will now work. If you just send a couple of messages, it'll probably work. I hope. I hope, I hope, I hope. Again, because I've had to... Um, I've had to restart everything on OBS, so things aren't going to look great. Things aren't going to behave great. It's a pain in the arse, but we'll get there. And if all else fails... I don't know, get a loop deck or something, I think. But I don't want to do that. 
Steve, oh, how are you doing, bud? Yes, I do need some positive mental attitude. I need things to work, is what I need. Um, which, ironically, was what I was doing earlier as well. Things weren't working, and I had to do a full day's work as well, on top of trying to get ready for this. But, you know, we'll get there. We will get there. Yeah, all raise your glasses for no avail. To this day, we've still got centre halves who are lumping it forward to no avail. And they will continue to do so because we are utter shite. Man, as long as you're getting points, you don't mind if it's on screen or not. It's staying on screen. If it's not on there, it doesn't look right. I don't like it. I don't like it. Seems to be working fine now. Well, I haven't started to press any buttons yet. Apart from, obviously, Botrix wasn't working properly. But it will. this is going to be one of those ones where, shit, I forgot to do that, or i never done this right. And I never remembered which button does what, so... I think I do. I think I do. I think I remember. We'll get there. No avail. Yep. Every time we had a commentator saying that, the ball got hit forward to no avail. I thought, this fella's having an absolute uh, storm. He's involved in everything. We should sign him. And then we did. Oh, God, I'm absolutely shattered. Up early, to get my daughter, take her into college. And when I rang her when I was outside the house, she was half asleep. It was like, um, oh, I'll be down in a bit. Brilliant, I could have stayed at home. So it was an early start for no reason. She managed to come out, dropped her off, went and got me prescription from Tesco. So it's been like a really, really long day. And then work, 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 proper work on top of that. No time for a nap. I never actually uh, ended up with a break either from work. But whisper it quietly. Health and safety will go mad. We don't want that. Don't press buttons or press all the buttons. In or out. You know what I mean? It's one of them, isn't it? Don't sit on the fence. No shrinking violets. Get in there. Get the job done. Get out. SAS style. Leave no corpses behind. Yeah, a bit like wanting to live in Jeopardy because there's loads of jobs there. Never, ever out of work if you're living in Jeopardy. I always thought that um, if I ever won the lottery, I would like to build a, a new town on the edge of a city somewhere called Not In Service. So at one o'clock in the morning, every bus that goes past has to take you home by law. Not Tesco's, it's the Tesco's. Oh, no, 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 no. The Asda. The Asda. Tesco is just Tesco, but it's the Asda in Liverpool. And Home and Bargain is called Home Bargains. Sorry, Home Bargains is called Home and Bargain. Because that's what it used to be called when it first started up in Liverpool. And we aren't changing. It is a hard life. But I managed to get some quality work done earlier. So I was quite pleased with that. Something I thought I was going to struggle with. Got done. And that's always a plus. If you think you're going to have a shitty day because you've got something really difficult to deal with and you manage to sort it out, Brucey bonus, slide, Brucey bonus. Uh, big thanks to my mate in work as well. It has been very, very patient with me, trying to sort me out with some stuff. Thought it was the big Tesco. It is the big Tesco. There's a little one, little Tesco or big Tesco. Just round the corner from it, it's massive as well. Literally, I, my, I've my, i got a steps target for the day, which is only 2,000 steps. Far less than I should be doing. 
half of my steps get done just going in to get um, bits and bobs. If I don't go to Tesco, there's a good chance that I don't hit me my steps target, which I don't think I've hit. We'll check this out now. Oh, I'm going to hit it today because I've got to go to Tesco anyway, but I've also been, I've been busy. I've hit it twice in the last two weeks, which is not good. Reminds you of an old Jethro joke about when his mate took 30 minutes nicking a bus. It took 30 minutes to find the, go- the one going where he lived. Yeah, that's, that's a proper old school joke, that, isn't it? Uh, Mickey Finn, an old Scouse comedian, done the same one of them. Um, spent ages looking for the bus I can't find the number 30 so we'll get to number 25 and we'll walk the rest of the way like all those old jokes said I went to Chippy the other day the girl behind the, kitchen, behind the counter said your fish won't be long so it better be fucking wide then Kirsty how you doing? Don't even know if you've got a Tesco. Mandy, you will have a Tesco. They are everywhere. They're all over the place like a wild woman's shite. Speaking of old Scouse comedians, there was a brilliant one called Jackie Hamilton. Fantastic comedian. And um, there was a, a World War II documentary, a not documentary, a film, sorry, being filmed on Ainsdale Beach. And they were looking for extras. Because obviously it was going to be World War II. There's going to be people everywhere. So they went round all the um, the agents, the booking agents, asking for people to be, or to turn up there and be uh, extras in this film. And he turned up and Jackie's got a, a beer gut on him. And the, the director went, come on, you're supposed to be a Japanese prisoner of war. Said, well, just tell him I was fucking caught yesterday. <laughs> but yeah, go on, all right, fair enough, you're in, you're in. Yeah, good. That's good to see, Kirsty. Good to see. Many rabbit holes. Is Dan's premiere finished yet? Do we know if it has or hasn't? Nope, still going on, I think. Ah, uh, still going on. Still going on strong. Oh, I've got to turn this to live chat instead of top chat, don't I? Otherwise, I'm going to miss out on stuff. Pick and Pay, a retail store in South Africa, once had an ex Tesco's boss's CEO, Richard Brasher. I should know these names because they're always in front of um, select committees over in the UK. Getting hauled across the coals for being evils. In fact, I think one was getting done the other day, weren't they? That's usually the same thing. Well, I didn't realise, I didn't realise... You are the main man. Whether you realised or not, you are responsible. Sort your shizzle out. Sort your staff out. Stop making huge profits and then claiming it's down to the war. Steve, you've not watched anything to do with ETS 21 for months. Um, i found YouTube lately has been just absolutely, I don't know, chocker with stuff. And it seems to be everyone's doing the same thing. So it just, a lot of stuff nowadays gets lost. Even if you got them on uh, notification, ends up getting lost in um, the middle of it all. It's weird. I've ended up, I, I follow loads of people and I've had the notifications on. I'll be looking for something specific and then all of a sudden they, they released a, a video four days ago. Why, do I, why did I not know that? It's ridiculous. Adam, how you doing, bud? Evening shabbers. Yep, flying visit. No worries, mate. Nice to see you as always. Do 
Yeah, you hate the new thing of self checkouts. You must do the scanning and packaging, yet you don't get a discount. Worse than that, on the um, the receipts that you get, it's brilliant. I, I mean, I walked into the shop, I walked into Tesco, I picked up the basket, I walked around the shop, I filled the basket full of stuff that I wanted, I went to the self scan, I scanned everything, I put everything in the bag. I paid for it, and on the bottom of the receipt it says, how did we do? You didn't do much, to be honest with you. Apart from someone stood there looking at me thinking, what's he trying to steal? No meds. I have been trying to use the, the proper tills a bit more. Those people shouldn't be losing their jobs just so we can use self-service. Fuckers. Expect another coffee premiere soon. This time it's everything about Robusta coffee. Looking at Saf for that one. Good. Looking forward to that, mate. I like them ones. I'm looking forward to the first couple of button presses later on to see if I remember which one's which. It could all go exceptionally badly in South Africa all the major retailers have cashiers and backpackers at the tills uh, we don't they're on Jordan a day when it's busy don't have backpackers you have to do that yourself but most of the tills get turned off as well you have to go and use the self scan because it saves money and they end up still making the record profits anyway. Only fifteen minutes long this time. That's that's the right um, the right length for videos. I think these days you get more than your eight minutes, so you get mid roll adverts once you you monetize and everything. But people seem to be enjoying that length of video rather than a four or five minute one or a three hour one. 15 minutes seems to be the sweet spot, apparently. Ah, uh, right. <clears throat> Is Jeff on the JK? He's not, funnily enough. He's not. What I've had to do, because it's the way it is on the stream deck, I have them set up in certain ways where each one's got their own scene. And each one then has their own little bits to open up. So I had to get them on the left-hand side of the keyboard. The J for joke is... <laughs> dad joke. See? I've actually put a little bit of thought into it. Yeah, soon there'll be no one at Tills, no doctors, just an AI screen, no lorry drivers... It'll be AI-operated lorries, yep. Goodbye jobs, goodbye people. It will be robots creating things for robots to send to robots. There'll be nothing left. Jeff and Raw Doggin. <laughs> Why didn't your message show up, Steve? What was that one? When was that, Steve? Nothing's nothing's showing up here as being blocked or anything. It's very strange. It's not as if I've got um aggressive moderation set on her either. I'm quite happy that uh, adults are adults and if you're watching the stream, you can read what's in it as well. It doesn't bother me in the slightest. Yeah, very odd. I've not done anything. My hands are here. Blame Jeff. It's normally Jeff. The D key. Yeah, use the tills with humans, Steve. Definitely, those people need their jobs. If you use them rather than the, the self-scans, 
they'll soon end up getting rid of the self scans because it'll just be wasted money. Mandy, you've not pushed any buttons yet. Good. I will do so. I've just pressed one button and it did work, so I've remembered one. Oh no, I've remembered I've remembered four now. This is great, I'm remembering things. Can't remember my own name or anything like there you go. That sky looks incredible out there. Incredibly. Yeah, the bots didn't like use humans. We don't like bots apart from bot tricks, who's not bad, I suppose. Kirsty, you mate always uses the tills with humans. As opposed to non humans, or do you mean the, the self scanning? Yeah, always use the ones with the people manning them because just it's stupid. If you end up relying on technology all the time people will get thrown out of it we don't want that bot discrimination you can't stop the bot can't stop the bot so I'll make an effort to use cash instead of debit card where you can yeah the ones to get rid of cash programmable money will come in Uh, conspiracies some of them come right nowhere near as many as um, you'd think though I'm a firm believer in Occam's razor instead the most obvious answer is always the right one yeah the self service ones you try and avoid them as much as possible Some people like a bit of dummy bot tricks. They do indeed. I think Jeff does, to be honest with you. He likes to come across as being all tough and manly and, well, manly, demonly. But I think he likes a bit of that. I think he likes to be a bit subservient to Olga at times. Whisper it quietly. I think Olga might have the whip hand over Jeff, literally. Just something we might need to look into. By the way, I don't think Jeff and Olga go dogging. I think they go Cerberusing. It's like dogging, only evil. Go with me, Silla's giving me gyp tonight. I sat here earlier on working and I should have got up and moved a bit more, but I didn't. Um, flying visit off to cause trouble else, el elsewhere, no worries. Good to see you, Adam, mate. Good to see you. Looking forward to seeing your video as well. And to you, hope you're well as well, mate. Catch you later. When we do the RDA meetup, are we going to do it in our adopted homeland of Moldova? Would we be, would we be allowed in? Good question. What's Moldova like? I know it's close to Romania, but what's it actually like? No one's got a clue, have they? We should do that. In fact, why haven't all these? Big YouTubers who go on trips around the world. Why haven't many of them gone to Moldova? Moldova, Moldova. Ah, it's next to Ukraine, maybe not. Maybe that's the reason why. It's because it's very hard to get a good level on your microphone when there's bombs going off behind you. Good point, Mandy, well made.
One sec, one sec. Just checking the football scores. I remembered one. How good's that? So if you were fleetingly in Bulgaria and you can't tell what it's like, fleetingly. Why, why is that? Did you just land in Bulgaria and have to take off? Saf means safe in Welsh. That's that Welsh Saf in it, blood. Yep, yeah, ironic. Daniel's got a premier on and most of the OGs are here. It's nice to see, actually. I'm delighted with that. And it's fucking camera. Stop it. Um, is that on the F key? No, it's on the B for ball. Uh, because I've split the keyboard sort of into two. So I remember where things are. Ish. Hopefully, hopefully I remember. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. I am getting quicker at setting OBS up though. This is about the fifth time I've had to do it. I've got all my bits and pieces saved. I know exactly what I'm doing now. In theory. Staff nearly... Nearly means safe in English. It does. It's mad some of the language stuff. The way it... Um, we've had this before, haven't we? The way the similar words in similar... Um, so Dutch, German, English. Loads of words are the same. Hey, predictable text. It is awful, isn't it? Although still not as bad as the old. Remember the, um, you had to press twice for B and um, all that kind of stuff. When you had to apologise to someone. I'm sorry I'm late. I was stuck in a queue. It comes up, I'm sorry I'm late. I was stuck in a Steve. That's a completely different thing, isn't it? True story, met some guys in Istanbul. Went home with them and didn't have your passport with you. So two days later, you were driven back to Turkey through an unmanned border post. Jeez. You were smuggled, man. Kirsty, you were on there earlier, but I had something to do, and then I went live, so here you are. Lovely to see you as well. Heduch, close, means peace. Is that right? Heduch. Or is it hev? Heduch. Double D's, th, isn't it? I think. My like, police is that heavily. Bloody Welsh. Crazy language. I'm still convinced it's a piss take. It's an in joke. Welsh and Irish, Gaelic Irish. I've not I don't know anyone who speaks um Scots Gaelic. Although I might do when you just haven't done it. Heather. <coughs> yeah, a double D is the uh, to her to her clue with and uh, that's that's not, not double D, fucking hell. Shoot me now. Heather. Definitely a mad language. I am convinced it's just Heath Uck, yeah. Careful, careful. Heath Uck, Heather. It's mad. I always love the fact that you've got the, the place names in um, both languages. So if you're going towards Wrexham, it says Wrexham and Wrexham because they're both exactly the same apart from instead of an X, there's a CS. 
You can't work out what it is at all. You need the translators to work that one out. Speaking of Wrexham, fantastic. Promoted yet again. I never know. In a couple of years' time, they'll be playing Everton in um, League One. The double D is the best. <laughs> yep. Seems to be the most popular anyway, Saf. Keep chatting to way in points, definitely, yep. It's all about the spuds, man. It's all about the spuds. It is impressive, that Steve, isn't it? I mean, to be fair to them, uh, Rob and Ryan have come into the, the, the town, not just the club, and have really bought into it, so they're doing well for the town. But they've also, to put the money where the mouth is, they haven't gone stupid and just started doing uh, oil money and stuff. Um, it looks like they're doing things the right way. Sorry, Mandy. They've... Um, Redeveloping the cop so the ground should hold more people. Hopefully, they should be in a decent place because they're a big, big club, Wrexham. There's a lot of teams in the uh, the championship who are nowhere near as big as them. And if they start doing really well, they've got the whole of North Wales to themselves. A lot of people are now. Support Everton, Liverpool, United and City. But if Wrexham do well, you'll see a lot of them going back to the, the home the home club. Potential is huge. It's the principle of putting Welsh on signs. Yep. Even if it's exactly the same, it just has to be done. Yeah, some people are going around, they can't be happy for Wrexham. It's just because the two people who were involved. A lot of fans of other clubs saying um, it's unfair. It's not unfair. Why wasn't it our club? Is your club the third oldest football club in the world? No. Well, fuck off then. They went to Wrexham because it's um, it's not a unique thing, but it's it's almost unique. Exceptionally old football club. The oldest international used international football ground in the world um, again you have the whole of North Wales Wales isn't being given anywhere near as much as it should be given uh, in terms of the Welsh League doesn't get any view in at all unless you watch an S4C um, you get nothing like that they've gone and went no sod it we're coming here uh, we're going to put it on a TV show so everyone knows what this place is. There's people going on the turf, which is the um, the pub next to the ground. People are flying in from all over the world who would never have ever even known what Wrexham is. They're now going there. It's fantastic. It will happen to other clubs as well, but at the moment it's just Wrexham. Just about to put the ball, Mandy. I got there first, I remembered. I pressed the button. Beef a button, beef a ball. Got there. Yeah, what they did best was get good people in to run the club. As an Everton fan, I definitely understand that. Uh, on account of the fact that ours is run by clowns. Absolute clowns. At least Welsh is phonetic. No, Mandy, it's not, I'm afraid. Sorry. Red card. Not remotely fucking phonetic. How can DD be the? It's not, not phonetic. W doesn't sound like you. I isn't you. It's just, it's not. Makes no sense. Wales should be given their own international cricket team. Um, they would be worse than almost anyone. The country's just too small. Ireland, they've got their own, and they've got the whole of Ireland, and even that, not great. Netherlands have got theirs, but most of their players come from South Africa. Because these small countries just haven't got the um, the player base to choose from. But at least it's called the England and Wales Cricket Board. So, 
which film star would you want to be on the board for Everton then? Well, it was close, very close to having him on the board. It was um, Sylvester Stallone, who's a massive Everton fan. So we could have done with him being on board. Ironically, he's now an Evertonian and a really big one. Um, and Dolph Lundgren grew up as an Everton fan. So when you're watching Rocky 3, no, was it Rocky 3? Rocky 4? Ah, oh, fuck it, I don't know. Rocky 3. Two Evertonians knocking shite out of each other. Which sounds pretty much like it's been all season. Yeah, just a film star with infinite money would be lovely. Be nice having oil money behind us, but I wouldn't like to do what uh, Newcastle have got at the moment. The people who own their club are... Let's be careful with this one. Um, when journalists go missing, you know what I mean? There's questions to be asked. I wouldn't want that involved. Um, if you know the Welsh alphabet, it's phonetic. That's not the point of ph phoneticism. Phonetic is phonetic. You don't need to know the alphabet. So, sorry, I'm denying that one, Mandy. Sorry, sorry, but I am denying that. It's not phonetic. And anyway, phonetic doesn't mean phonetic. It's not phonetic in Welsh. It's punoink or something. People moan about Delia. She's always done her best for Norwich. I don't think many do actually moan about her, to be honest. I think as football fans, we all see her and go, yeah, fair enough. She's a fan with a, a few quid and is looking after the club. Plus, we had a, a good laugh about her being pissed. Let's be having you and all that stuff. Apart from things like that, you don't really hear too much about Delia. She just gets on with it. When you hear too much about the people who own your club, that's when you know you've got trouble. Look at Japan at Rugby Union. They started with imports. Now they have a proper talent pool. They do. Japan's also massive compared to Wales. You know what I mean? A lot And heavily uh, populated, so you can go and find people there. It surprises me. Talking about the Netherlands, how small that is as a country. It surprises me just how good their talent pool is for all sports. The football um, team has always been fantastic. The Dutch football national football team. And it's only a small country. A small country that also has um, speed skaters and athletes and things. So it's, they're not just all footballers, it's mad. But they, t they tend to punch way above their average. And the converse side of that is, why are there not more Indian footballers or, you know, China, we're starting to get China a bit more and, well, whole of Southeast Asia more. And I understand that in India especially, it's going to be cricket. That's a religion there, you're not going to play football if cricket is a, an, opp an opportunity, so get that completely. But you'd think, some of the kids must be pissed off with just cricket all the time. They might be playing footy and then someone goes, you know what, you're really good at this and you can earn a lot of money. Come this way, son. He's not missing, we know where he went. Yeah. Tom Cruise, but you have to convert to Scientology. Fuck right off. Don't want him anywhere near the place, little weirdo. Not a chance. And also, being Jack Reacher, I've read a couple of those books, and Jack Reacher sounds like some absolutely man mountain, massive dude, and that little gain and piss flap turns up. Fucking idiot. Don't trust people who smile that much. They're hiding something, you know what I mean? Uh, Anthea fucking Turner. There's something wrong with people who smile that much. You know, when they smile, it looks like it's hurting them. The woman off the Omaze advert. You can win this house. Fucking calm down, girl. Where are the bodies hidden? Rob and the Ryan have bought the Alpine F1 team. But they still suck. 
they will do. The whole F1 sucks, to be honest with you. I remember watching it when it was decent racing, not who's got the fastest laptop. It is shit nowadays. Got shit during the 90s. The 70s and 80s were spectacular. If you go back and watch um, any of the Mansell against Senna and Prost and people like that, brilliant, or uh, Hunt against Lauda, that was when it was proper sport. All about sports management and following a singular plan towards an end goal. It should be. A lot of the times it's about ego. That's the the unfortunate problem. We had that at Everton with um, Bill Kenwright. Who, there's people, there was people wishing him dead before he died. It's horrible the way things are. Um, he's got two, two major things that were wrong with him. One, he wasn't oil rich. And two, he had too much of an ego to let go. At a point where it should have just been, I've taken this as far as I can. It's time to get out and let someone else do it. He didn't. He hung on constantly. So, ego needs to be gotten rid of as well. And not many people with that amount of money are allowed, will, will allow their ego to drop. Never see Indian or Chinese long distance runners. Maybe they struggle with the stamina. It not it weird the way um, it sort of works? Where you come from can also dictate what kind of sport you're into. Lots of middle and long distance runners are very, very thin from parts of Africa. Long muscles, um, huge stamina that you can run for days after days after days. And yet you then go to the Pacific Islands, New Zealand maybe, and see all the Polynesians with... Huge, massive, massive people. A lot of the rugby league players, like six foot six and eighteen stone, very, very powerfully built, fast switch muscles, and they can run very quick. You know, and you got Olympic sprinters, all big, thick, chunky muscles. It all depends on where you're born. Plus, I suppose again, it goes back to in India. You either play cricket or, I don't know, you're in business. I think that looks about it, doesn't it, really? All the stuff I've seen about India. You either play cricket or you're a businessman. Or you're a businessman who plays cricket. Japan has an Olympic marathon silver medal. I didn't realise that. That was the year Yaziah Togwani won gold for South Africa. Funny how the amaze houses are usually near a cliff. Is that because if they're near a cliff, they cost about 20 quid to buy? You can save them about 4 million. Someone gets in there and then six months later, their house is at the bottom of the... But it's normally Cornwall, isn't it? They're always in fucking Cornwall for some reason. Cornwall or the lakes. But what's, what is wrong with her, that woman? How can anyone be that happy? You're selling tickets to win a house. What is she on? Can we get hold of any of her? You see, now this is where Adam should still be in the conversation if he's into his conspiracy theories. Go and find a rabbit hole of conspiracy theories about why all the amazed houses are near cliffs. I wonder what Matt Letizia has got to say about it. Maybe it's the rice diet. It could be. Although don't a lot of African countries eat rice as well. And yet they seem to be able to run all day long. Yeah, Japan and China, it might be down to the amount of smog that they have as well. Hard to run when everyone's got asthma. Unless you're Liverpool Football Club at all, of course, you know. <clears throat> it's funny when uh, Klopp's medical person turned up. The famous one from uh, Mines. They all started getting asthma, so they all got um, inhalers. And then all of a sudden, they were running 17 miles a second. Ridiculous. 
she's being paid to smile. But yeah, but even getting paid to smile, no one smiles that much. That is a chemically induced smile, that one. There's definitely something. She's on something. Like she's been away for the weekend in Amsterdam. Are you all right, girl? Oh, I'm buzzing, mate. I know she's not even scouse, but there you go. Yeah, the amazed houses are about to fall into the ocean. They can only give it away. So you think you've won a £4 million house, and when you get there, as I say, within a couple of weeks, half your back garden's gone. Your cars f come flying out of the uh, the garage. That's upside down on the beach. The one in Norfolk was on the coast, but not on a cliff. Was it close enough to the edge, though, where it's getting washed away? Because there's a huge amount of the East Coast getting washed away, isn't it? Scarborough's going to be like a, um, like a Brazilian landing strip at some point. I know Scarborough's further north, like, but... That's Scarborough, by the way. Not Scarborough, if anyone's watching. Scarborough. I haven't been there in years. Or oh, Whitby, or oh, Redka. Redka used to be nice, apart from the fact that it was always windy and full of sand. So you end up getting shot blasted. That's horrible. Eh? Southport's not as bad as that for some strange reason. It can get windy and it is sandy, but it's never normally sandy and windy at the same time. You're not getting your skin flayed off as you're walking down Lord Street. Lord Street, of course, by the way, a little bit of a fact for you, is the um, the inspiration for the Champs-Élysées in Paris. As Napoleon III spent time in Southport, and he loved Lord Street that much that when the Champs-Élysées was being redeveloped and redesigned, he wanted to look as much like Lord Street as possible. Actual fact. Actual fact. You can go and search that one online if you want. The previous owners sold them for a reason. Let the reason be love. The worst bits from Chrome with the Great Yarmouth. That must, must be horrible. And it's, it's it's mad that, not that far away really. I know it's well, not that far away. The south coast is far away, but in the grand scheme of things, it's not that far away. You've got cliffs. If only you had cliffs. Big cliffs. Not chalk ones, solid ones. Like the cliffs of Moa in um, Ireland. You saw that reel, did you, man? The reel about um, Napoleon, was it? I got taught that by someone in the pub when we first moved here back in the early 90s. Did you know Napoleon III lived, uh, lived in Southport for a while? Also, Adolf Hitler lived in Liverpool for a while. Stayed in the Adelphi and apparently he went to see Everton. So maybe that's the reason why I was shit. Bad vibes, bad juju, man. Ju I shouldn't have used juju when I'm talking about fucking Italy, should I? Sorry. Horrible. You know, the new houses built by multi-millionaire builders. By giving them to charity, they're getting a huge tax deduction. There's lots of that going on, isn't there? I've, I watched something about that the other day, and I can't remember where it was, but that's the reason. Uh, so many housing estates are being built and then stopped. Like the one that we've got, they're just they're finishing off now, funnily enough, but um, a lot of them, they're building halfway up and then stopping and then leaving them completely empty and then something else happens to them and it's all written off. Mad. Didn't I know sister living in Liverpool as well? Her name was Doris. I think she did. That's the reason why he was over here. So, he could have possibly bought Everton. 
I don't know who would have been worse. Him or Tom Pissing Cruise, but... Well, weird, and Very weird. wonder what he thought of the place. Is that what made him angry? Albert Einstein stayed in a cottage two miles from you. In 1938, he was hiding for the, from the Germans before moving to the US. I did know about that. I, I knew he stayed in the UK for a while. Didn't realise it was that close to you, mate. But yeah, that makes sense. Fly him in on one of the RAF bases. Hide him away. That's good. I like stuff like that. I mean, I don't know Norfolk or East Anglia at all very well, but... It's nice to know that somewhere has got another little bit of a story to it as well. More of a backstory. Little facts, little things that have gone on that you don't know about. The house that we lived in, in Garston, near Garston Station in Liverpool, apparently Lord Haw Haw lived there. He was the one that was famously um, giving secrets to the Germans during the war. Um, not a very, very good claim to fame for your house but yeah someone told us that and you what I didn't say Mad Ting fam at the time because it was about 1985 and people didn't speak like that oh, this chair's getting thrown to the fucking wind in a minute I need a better one should I buy a new chair I don't know, maybe I should treat myself. Hopefully, hopefully I won't need to go and buy a loop deck because Steam Deck might come back and fix this shit. Otherwise, I'm going to have to buy one of them because, yeah, not enjoying this, looking at the keyboard and not knowing what the bleeding now I'm supposed to be doing next. It's not good. I wonder if in years to come, people will look at the Asda on the Smith Down Road in Toxteth and go, that's where Nick was born. I wonder if I have a blue plaque put up there. Man, that you've been to Burnham on Sea when you were a kid, is that Norfolk? Do we know? Burnham on Sea. I didn't set up the uh, the thing with the thing, so I can't do the thing with the thing. If that makes sense. Burn them on sea. Let's have a look. No, that's in Somerset, man. You're on the, the wrong side of the uh, the country. I grew up in the village. When you were a paperboy, one of the old folk told you about it. You actually met him in the pub. Ironically, because his name, Einstein, is one big thing of beer, isn't it? I like that. Ali, how you doing, girl? Yeah, man, was there a windmill water pump there? We need to know this. <laughs> Moro Dadawetu. Yeah, how was your training? It wasn't too bad, was it? Good. Horsey. Mandy knows horsey. Of course he. Yeah, Burnham on Sea is in Somerset. So it is fucking miles away. You are in exactly the wrong place. Down the road from Western Supermare. I 
just down the road from Barrow as well, which shifts in metal are from Barrow Motors. What's the Pontons then? Is it Clacton? There's Pontons everywhere, isn't there? The one in Southport just closed down, which, speaking of Adolf and his, um, his mates, uh, it looks like a fucking gulag. Horrible, horrible place. Pontins, Burnham on Sea. Yeah, that's still Somerset. Is there a Pontins in Clacton? Doesn't say so. Butlins was in Clacton. That makes makes any sense. Saf, if there was one landmark or place of significance in your town to be named after you, what would it be and why for everybody in the chat? That's a hell of a question. Is that what would we like or what would be more fitting? Good, good question. Um, I think mine would probably be the St. John's Beacon. Because it's tall and ugly. So it's just, it's me, isn't it? Tall, ugly and scouse. As much as I'd love it to be the live building, it's not going to be that, is it? Or George's all. The Burnham's on the Norfolk coast is now called Little London because all the houses are second homes. Uh, I hate that. There's too many places around the UK like that. Cornwall have got it really bad. Uh, the Lake District have as well. Just no one from down there can get any housing because it's such a premium. The stuff that's left empty for most of the year, just so someone can turn up there for a, a month or two during the uh, the summer. It's awful. People have got to live there all year round. What are they going to do? They don't. They have to leave. That's what happens. Ali, how am I feeling? I am feeling absolutely exhausted. Stressed. The exercising hasn't gone at all the last few days. I've been so tired. But, you know, tomorrow's another day. We live to fight on. Either or, Saf, yep. So what do you think would be the landmark named after you, or what would you like it to be, and why? My dog in car park. I will get one one of these days, Steve, I will. Uh, you've got a rock called a bear stone. So that's you made of tough stuff, there you go. Settle for that one. Good thinking as well, though. If you're getting up and doing your training all the time, then definitely a bit of tough stuff. Solid as a rock, as Ashford and Simpson said. Man, do you go for either the little chapel on the main road in? Because your mum and dad married there. Oh, that's nice. Or, oh, let's see what you say, or. Oh. Yeah, and you, Saf, go on. Saf, 
Steve, about 25 years ago, Harris got fed up sending trucks to Norfolk for weekend deliveries. They opened a warehouse in Norwich to store the goods and deliver from Norwich rather than London. It must have been pretty bloody bad then, if that's the case. And what do the people that come from there actually do? Is there anywhere that they can go and buy houses or rent or anything, or, or just taken up with who raised you turn up there a few a few weeks of the year? Bastardos. Or Brickfields Pond, because it's near where your mum was born. Two very, very good places and two very good reasons, Mandy. Well done. I like that. Have a look. There you go, that's me. St. John's Beacon. Tall, ugly and scouse. I've been in there. Back in the 70s, the top of that used to revolve and there used to be a restaurant in there. Um, It was shit. Now Radio City, or whatever it's called this week, uh, they have all their offices up there and the um, the radio stations up there. It is ugly, but it's also it's a landmark. It's been there that long that people know what it is just by the sight of it. So, and it was on the start of Brookside and that, so people know what it is. Can you dig me trench coat? Is it purple fair? Good question, Jeff. You will have to answer. So if you've got a little hill close by with a pathway, it takes two minutes to get up, but once on top you can see Sweet F.A. So it'll be named after you for being utterly useless. Not at all, not at all, mate. But now that Jeff's just made an appearance, shall we try and push buttons, shall we? This could end up horrifically bad. If I wipe the internet, it's not my fault, okay? (laughs) Did I remember to put a microphone on this particular scene? Yes or no? I think I did. I'm feeling super sonic. Give me Jeff and Sonic. Liam's got the Jeff within him. Locked up for tax evasion after all the stuff I get up to. I'm surprised at that one that he doesn't bust out. Ping pong sing song ding dong. No idea, you tell me. That almost went all right, didn't it? Almost. I can't say that the other ones are going to be any better. Yep, absolutely 100%, Ali. You're very, very talented, Saf. Not a useless person by any stretch of the imagination. Most villages on the North Norfolk coast have community houses where if you're from the village you can live in one of them until you're 30 years old. That's good to hear, that needs to be done because otherwise, as I say, there's parts of Cornwall and there's parts of the Lake District where there's going to be no locals anymore. It will just be houses that people go to when the weather's nice and maybe the occasional shop. But then the people who own the shop, they can only do that if there's a... A flat upstairs should have nowhere else to live otherwise. Seth, when are you finishing the bottle? I take it you're engraving a bottle not on the bottle. Whiff whiff. I can't stand that because it was Boris Johnson who said it. The first time he heard it and now I just I remember him every time I, I hear the name. Horrific, horrific man. Sam, 
minutes after your mum claimed the bottle already. You've got to steal it back soon. It's already displayed in the lounge. Oh, that's nice. On display as it should be. As all your art should be. Lots of weird noises in here tonight. I think Jeff might be up to no good. Worrying me. I've got to go to Tesco after this. I never went yesterday because I was so exhausted. And despite the fact that I went earlier on this morning and never took my bag with me and I never took my wallet with me so I couldn't get anything actually that's bollocks I've got my me, um, me phone with me and I can do it on my phone can't I what an idiot could have done that could have saved myself a trip as it is I've got to go after this I've not eaten yet well I've snacked not eating properly though. Doesn't help. How's Ruby de Modra? Fast asleep next to you dreaming of chasing rabbits and pheasants. That's living the life that mate. That's proper living the life. Good al Ruby. Man, do you keep thinking of ways to fill the bottle? Which idea is winning so far? What are the options, Mandy? Which ones have you thought of so far? What's going in there? Terrible list today. Aching all over. Stiff as a wanker zanky. Not good. I need a good stretch. Uh, don't say... R's name, she'll wake up. Yep. Sorry, I'll be careful. I did think of very loudly ending each stream by shouting uh, Siri played with Sabbath's atmosphere and see how many people moaned about it. Madrid are winning. Yeah, just have a look at that. They are indeed. Rodrigo. Ah, well. Didn't move a muscle. Doesn't recognise me voice, that's what it is. No command. First idea was sand, like Alan Bay. Sand's nice. Especially coloured sand. Coloured water, yep. Then gel. Could you not have sand with coloured water over the top of it? Would that work? Then gel and resin. And lights. Lights, right, get me behind lights. Lights in bottles work very well. Well, you know I like lights anyway. I've gone for a... How's that working as a colour combination? Blue. 
bit of green at the top. I tried, I thought I'd try and do, um, what I was going to do, I was going to try and do green down the bottom and then blue at the top, so it looked a little bit like land and then air or something, and it looked shit. Yeah, stop spamming the chat, Mandy. Trying to get your points, that's all that is. And a ship. Could you fit a ship in there? It would have to be a little tiny one. <sighs> Not sure I'm going to last the, the full two hours tonight, to be honest. I'm exhaustified. Been one of them days, hasn't it? One of them days. Shipping a bottle old school, yep. I've seen a thing on how they make them. For years as a kid, I could not work out how they did it. I know most people look at it and go, well, it's going to have to involve something like this or this or that. As a kid, no, I just thought it was magic. Has to be magic. Do they make the bottle around the ship? Feckin' Egypt. Sand sounds good. I think sand and coloured water. Think of the watch hours, yes, I know. I will do, I will do. I've also got to think about not crashing the car and things like that. Pop-up sales. Yep. But when you're a kid and you don't know about these things, like this, this has to be witchcraft. It has to be magic. Does Paul Daniels make them? The ultimate magician. How on earth he managed to snag the lovely Debbie McGee. That was magic, wasn't it? He was from where we lived in Middlesbrough. There was a cricket club at the top of the uh, the road that I lived in, so it was called Cricket Lane. And there was loads of cricket-themed roads off there. And then over the main road, there was Skipper's Lane. And that's where Paul Daniels was from. Just over the road from where we lived. Originally, obviously. I think he eventually moved down south, as most people do. First little bit of um, money they get. Piss off close to London. That London, that day of London there. Uh, terrarium, yep. Yeah. There you go, there's your options. Loads of them there. Sail away, sail away, sail away. I oh, can't even have Orinoco Fleur. You ever seen the Australian comedian Steve Hughes? He used to be the drummer in heavy metal bands, and he's a stand-up comedian. Um, and he says he loves Enya, and people start laughing. He went, "No, no, honest. Not many people have, have listened to Slayer for twelve hours in a day. You need something to chill in the afternoon." And he comes up with a fantastic phrase: "How can you hate Enya? It's just silence coloured in." I thought it was a Sums it up perfectly, it is silence coloured in. Orinoco flow definitely sounds better with a Geordie accent. Just sat in front of the telly, man. Eating an ocean pie, listening to Orinoco flow. Never heard of him. He's worth watching. He's um, an exceptionally funny man. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. He's going up, he's going up, he's going up, he's going up, he's going up. He's there. Ali, you've levelled up. Fantastic. And I pressed the button and it worked. I 
pressed L for level. L for level. Brendan Foster was the best. Do I know any of his stuff? The um He had the runner commentator, wasn't he? With his, uh, his very nice chilled accent. What was it he did? Ah, uh, he founded the Great North Run. From Heaven, South Tyneside. Yeah, about fucking time. A mathematician once said that music is your brain counting even when it doesn't know it's counting. When it doesn't count, the music isn't good. Yep. That's why if you're playing something that's in... A lot of things in 4-4 four, four because 4 beats to the bar, 4 bars to the, um, the turn around. It's easy for people to listen to without thinking too hard. So it feels like it's... It's natural to them. When you then start doing things like waltz or complex time signatures, it's a bit more grating and you have to listen to it, spend a bit more time listening to it. You get more out of it when you do, but that's why four to the floor is very popular because it is just your brain can automatically tune into it. You don't have to think. Great, had the Great North Run. I didn't realise that he'd um, invented it. What, what, what's the word I'm looking for? Founded it. That's it. Founded it. Must be the look of the Irish. It must be Ali. It must be. Definitely. You must have been eating your lucky charms. Being Irish, don't you hate the way Irish are represented? With stuff like that, fucking leprechauns and um, American Boston police with the worst Irish accents in the world. I don't know it's the life out of me, I'm not even bloody Irish. It was Leibniz, ah right. The man was such a genius, they named a, they named a chocolate biscuit after him. You didn't know it was lost, Mandy. Yes, you didn't know it was lost. Of course not. But he found it anyway. Does anyone watch that? I can't stand stuff like that. The fucking Great North Run on the telly. Or the London Marathon. And at the start of the marathon, why did they all lean forward? Why are you leaning forward? You're not going to get a quarter of a second advantage on this. You're still going to be knackered in 26 miles, dickhead. Jinxie, how you doing? Isn't it the same when you see English portrayed as bowler hat wearing tea drinking fo football hooligans? Not so much because a lot of them are. Um, we need more bowler hats, less football hooliganism, I'd say. And I am drinking Earl Grey after all, so I'm doing my bit. Yep, stand by your beds. There is a leprechaun whisperer here. Is that a euphemism? Keep talking, me leprechaun's about to pop up. Is that what that means?
Yeah, it's fine. I watch loads of old films and um, some of the American ones where they've got supposedly Irish um, policemen in Boston during the 1800s. Their accents are comically bad. But they're the ones that people think that's an Irish accent. So if you ever watch The Simpsons and stuff, that's the same accents they always use. For fuck's sake. That's not the way they talk, mate. Although still not as bad as Dick Van Dyke's Cockney accent in Mary Poppins. Don't know what part of London he was from. Melbourne or something like that, wasn't it? Strike a light, Mary Poppins. Still, it's a good film, Mary Poppins. Isn't it, really? We were talking on a morning show we had the other day, right? Shared it on Facey. Uh, I'm not one, not, not really one for Facebook, to be honest. Um, I did have to, well, I had to jump on there the other day, after getting all my birthday wishes, but um, that's all I ever seem to do once a year, go and thank people. Has anyone noticed that after conversations you get certain things that were discussed, the ads come up on your phone, your phone is watching you? It does. Funnily enough, two or three days ago, um, I mentioned something to my dad, and as I was talking to him, he went, what? Pull his phone up, well, look. It is listening. It's always listening. A bit like the English accents on MASH. To be honest, though, uh, a few of the actors that appeared on MASH were actually English. Uh, not like they had some random fella from Sacramento, California, trying to be English. They, are, they pushed him a little bit, didn't they? They... Um, Cartoonified him a little bit, but yeah. What's worse, worse, a bad English accent or a British villain? A bad English accent. British villains are brilliant. All you need to do is watch uh, Alan Rickman and people like that. Superb. Bad English accents are awful. But that's not just like Hollywood. Lots of English accents, lots of accents within England are badly done. Being someone from Liverpool, I hate the way that they always get someone in to portray a scouser who hasn't got the first clue about how the accent goes. Absolutely awful. It's a difficult accent to do. Never find anyone who's good. Yeah, we're all watching you, J. Lou. We're all there. Happy birthday, thank you. That was... Last week, funnily enough, exactly a week ago, last Wednesday, I am now officially a proper owl bastard. Ali, you were watching Dan's Wrecked Nation premiere the other day. You and Kirsty were talking about Star Wars. You were in Tesco and there were Star Wars. Star Wars toys on offers. On offer. Offers. The fucking hell's wrong with me? That happens quite a lot. It does happen quite a lot. That's the same though as when you buy a car. No one else has got the car that you've got, and as soon as you start driving, every bastard's got the same car as you. That happens constantly. Alan Rickman was brilliant. He was, and they always like to use the um, archetypal English actor because they sound intelligent well spoken which makes it sound even worse that they're evil how can someone intelligent be evil and it's to get back at us for you know being colonial stuff you know what I mean Steve you got your parents and you're watching something on YouTube on the TV and when you're home the channel that they were watching was recommended to you even though you never watched it your phone is always listening. I was talking to someone about it with um, Alexa and Echo, Amazon Echo, it was it Echo Dot and what have you. There was little listening devices around the house. They're always listening to you. No, no, they don't. 
they switch off after a while. So well, how do you wake them up? Well, you say, like, wake up, Alexa, and she wakes up. How does she hear you to wake up if she's not listening in the first place? They're constantly listening. It's all about advertising. Whales gone mad. Was it Alan Rickman in Truly Madly Deeply with Juliet Stevenson? It was, if I remember rightly. Jackie, if you look up something on Amazon, you get nothing but ads for the product, which, given what you would be looking for, I think would be very dangerous. Be careful opening your phone in public. We know you. We know you. Especially after watching this stream. All kinds of adverts and uh, dog leads and cars and stuff. Engine oil and lube. Best crying scene in a film ever. I don't know, I think Scum takes some beating as well. You, you, know, you lock on your phone so it's safe in public. Very, very wise, very wise. Snot and everything, right? Proper went for it. Absolute peak crying. The best crying scene was at the end of Rambo First Blood. I have not seen that in such a long time, I can't remember it. I'm sure we went to see that in the um, the pictures in Allerton with my mates. Sure, that's what I'm th pretty sure we did. Or was it Rambo 2? Oh, I can't remember. I've had a sleep since then. I'm going to have to press a button, and I can't remember which one's which now, so... Again, this could go spectacularly wrong, but we'll give it a go. But Kipper's Vindaloo... <laughs> can't be good for you. UK inflation falls as meat and crumpet prices drop. What? Inflation has fallen to its lowest level in two and a half years, driven largely by slowing fruit food prices. Prices rose by 3.2% in the year to March, down from 3.4% the month before, according to official figures. Official ones, these mind. The cost of some items, including meat, crumpets, Chocolate biscuits, furniture and household items fell. However, petrol and diesel prices rose. Of course they did. Kipper says, shove your crumpets up your arse. It's going, it's going up, it's going up, it's going up, it's going up, it's there. No, it's not there, it's not there. Stop it. Never seen any Rambo movie, Jack. You're not missing anything, to be honest with you. Man, you've never seen it or a Rocky film. Rocky, on the other hand, Rocky was good. I'm not an action film kind of person, to me, myself, to be honest. Not a big fan of explosions. Explosions and special effects in the way of um, compensation for plot and things like that doesn't work for me. Plus, I mean, Sylvester Stallone, good Evertonian, but the American army, the whole army, the infantry, the, the marines, everything couldn't beat the Vietnamese. He turns up with his tie round his head and just wins the war single-handedly. Hollywood man. Thick as shit, aren't they? Well, you might have watched one of the Rambos, or maybe it was a Rocky. They're pretty much interchangeable, to be honest with you. Um, Steve, did I watch the documentary about Eric Brown? I didn't. I, I couldn't find the one you were talking about. I have watched 
a good few videos, but they all seem to be interviews with him, talking about planes and his experiences in them. Very, a very, very interesting fella from the stuff I've seen, but not managed to see just a documentary about him yet. I will keep on looking now. He does sound a very, very interesting chap. Fearless, absolutely fearless. The first Stallone film you ever saw was about arm wrestling. Mad, isn't it? Some of the shit we have to watch. Rambo First Blood and Rocky 1 is where they should have stopped. Yes, but if they'd have stopped at Rocky 1, we would never have had Apollo Creed and um, Ivan Drago. If he dies, he dies and all that stuff. Plus a bit of James Brown living in America. In Ireland, the price of petrol and diesel meant have gone up to two litres, two euros a litre. Yeah, I've not looked. I haven't filled my car up in a couple of weeks' time. I haven't filled it up in a couple of weeks. I'll have to do it in a couple of days' time. I'll see how much they are then. Same goes for John Wick. I fucking hate John Wick. He gets on me nerves. Uh, my dad keeps watching the John Wick films almost every night and then falls asleep in front of the telly watching them. And I have to listen to that shit. Genuinely, I mean, also, I, I might cause offence here, and if I do, tough shit. Die Hard is absolute bollocks. I hate action films. What's the point in them? First and last Rambo's are good films. I've seen both of them. Um I was drunk watching the, the second one, sorry the last one. Not my not my scene, I'm afraid. Not a Stallone fan, same here. Although, like we said earlier on, you ain't here, Jackie, I don't think, but he's a big Everton fan, so it would be nice if he got involved. Get rid of this billionaire half without the way that we've got. Thomas, how you doing, bud? The flag's up in the background, yep. To cover all the people that have been in on the stream. One representing everyone. And if anyone's watching and your flag is not up there, let me know and I'll put it up there. With an equal opportunity stream on here. Cobra was the Stallone film with the arm wrestling, right? Petrol's risen badly this last two weeks. A pain in the ass, isn't it? Don't know why. As the um, the fella from the RAC, Edmund King, I think it is, as he said, with petrol prices, they always rise like a rocket and fall like a feather, which I think is a brilliant way of putting it. Whenever they go up in the budget, they go up at six o'clock. Whenever they come down, it's always it's going to be in about four or five weeks before the price comes down. Never seen Die Hard. Well, what it is, Jackie, is Bruce Willis wandering around in a, a vest while there's loads of explosions and no plot or interest whatsoever for me. Thomas, knackered, join the club, mate. I have no idea why. Well, apart from the stroke and that, like, but. It must be catching. I am pres well, presuming that Man City have just scored. Yep. Kevin De Bruyne. Ali, you've watched, you've watched Die Hard. Did you watch it with a vengeance? See, the petrol's gone up recently because of the half-term holiday. Like I say, I've not even noticed, to be honest. I normally fill mine up once a month when I get me pip. They can pay for it rather than me, sod them. And I've just put, oh, not Evans, I'm just about to, I'm just about to lie to you. Um, I've put in for me half-price car tax. I haven't. I've printed off the letter 
and I've written on the envelope, but I need to put stuff in that before I can send it off. But because I'm on PIP, I get me car tax half price apparently. And I'm going to get me 180 quid back. I'm going to spend it on vinyl. By vinyl, I mean records as well, by the way. Not anything kinky. Not dogging related. No, I didn't. You had it was called Over the Top, Mandy. I've got no idea, to be honest. Thomas, so you're working too hard, mate. Don't be doing that. Don't work too hard. No one should work too hard. We work to live, we don't live to work. Steve, it was, was it? Is that the name of it? Over the top. Alan Rickman's Russian accent. I think I've seen them supporting uh, Gong in the uh, the Empire back in 1971. I wasn't even born then. Yeah, what do you do, Tom? What do you do? Mandy, you watched Under Siege 1 and 2 recently if there was nothing else on. Honest. You'd have to be Under Siege to watch them. Steven Seagal's a bit of a blurt, isn't he? Let's be honest. And it was over the top. Nobody's business what I get, yeah. Yeah, I know. Nobody's business but my own. And my Amazon watch list, whatever it is. I like the way Steven Seagal beats the bad guys up. Never trust a man with a ponytail. We used to have a fella in our pub. Um, Grey hair, oldish fella with a, a ponytail. He used to hang over the back of his collar. And... My dad one night said it looks like guano, looks like um, bird shit hanging out of a nest. So his nickname from that day onward was bird shit neck. Genuinely, when someone come in the pub, has bird shit neck been in? Nickname's a boss, aren't he? Steven Seagal, reminded that under every ponytail is an arsehole. Ask Steve about not working hard. <laughs> nah, ask Steve works hard, we know that. Doing a job I couldn't bloody do, I know. You wouldn't have been there, would you, Steve, working one-handed? You're a nurse. No wonder you're knackered, mate. I've got all the time in the world for nurses. Anybody who works in that, uh, that field, the caregiving field, Absolutely amazing. Made my couple of months in hospital. I wouldn't say enjoyable, but actually, yeah, enjoyable. It was tough. It was um, hard work. It wasn't nice, but the people were fantastic. You hate Steven Seagal. I, yeah, I do as well. He is also a fake martial artist. He is. I know these things. My mate is a very, very good um, represented Great Britain martial artists and he ate them as well. I think you work in an organic veg factory. I had to say I had to be almost got that wrong there. <laughs> organic veg factory. Jesus. I shouldn't be this tired. Should not be this tired. Saw some posts about nicknames at work recently. A fella called Wayne Bruce is called Mambath, yeah. I've seen some of them. Some fantastic ones. We've got our mate. Um, his, his dad was Indian and his mum was Irish. So it was a very complicated marriage. Um, his surname's Singh and his nickname in football was Garupta. The Indian karaoke star Garupta Singh. As long as I make the tea. Do you know what, Steve? I'm on my way, mate. Show me the Sebastian Vettel. I'll sort the tea out. 
aan my gedies en prou. So what you work with the NHS, this is a very unfortunate set of circumstances here. Class Thomas, followed by he's a, a woman hating piece of sh- arrogant piece of shit. I'm presuming Jackie, you mean Steven Seagal there, not Thomas. Ah, uh, Thomas is class. I only make fancy tea. No, 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 no. I don't. For myself, I do. I am capable of making decent tea, though. A nice builders, cup of builders, milk and two. Yep, exceptionally hard job, definitely. I do make big cups, I do. Very big cups. <laughs> yeah, <they're laughs> So you had a guy called Clark Kensington, so you called him Super Mansington. <laughs> I love that. That's that's what nicknames should be. A mate of ours, again five aside, he scored an absolute worldy during one of the games on a Thursday night. And then he said you're like the fat Pele, and then his nickname became Belle after that for a while. When I say a while, I meant twenty years like. Anthony from from Scotland of smaller statue at yeah, Shetland's Honey. <laughs> Brilliant, isn't it? Love stuff like that. We also got a mate who's called Pink Man. And for years people were asking, why do you call him Pink Man? It was because he took his shirt off at the end of one of the games and his skin looked a bit pink. So that was it. Again, he's a, he's been called Pink Man for 30 years. Hadwig, good evening. How are you with you? All is good? You're not late, you're not late. There's no time scales for getting here. I'm just glad when anyone anyone turns up. How's things? How are we doing? You've missed some button pressing. I'm still not 100% sure it's going to go well. I've got one more thing to press. Jackie, you're going to be late on Wednesday as you join Fat Club. Whoa, 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 whoa. The first rule of Fat Club is don't talk about Fat Club. Steve, you had a pink man on one firm. His nickname was Gammon. Everyone does. You know, it's, there's always one. Guaranteed there's always one. And the share comes off. They are absolutely pure pink. Just got back from the gym. Rather you than me, Heather. Rather you than me. The only thing I do with the gym is I'll go in there and get on the row machine and I'll have a float for half an hour. Just sit there on my phone. Trying to buy lube on Amazon. Yep, only starting it next week, are you? Let us know how it goes. No, don't let us know how it goes. Uh, right, you usually go on a Saturday, but your friend couldn't make it on oh, the Thursday. He couldn't make it tomorrow. Not sure why your brain said Saturday. It's because you've been working hard. That's why you've been putting the shift in in the gym. Slimming world. 
I should go on that really, shouldn't I? Trim myself off. What did you miss? Um, my stream deck is still not working. So I've been hotkeying, I've been pressing buttons. It hasn't exploded yet. Yes. We've got one more thing to go. So it might still explode. In the colour community, there's always a fair skin guy, and his nickname will always be Boor. Farmer, Whitey, yep. Yeah. Like a standard thing, isn't it? In the same way that when you've got someone over here whose surname is White, they always get called Chalky. Uh, if the nickname's Harris, it's always Chopper or Bomber. Man, you thought you'd missed a few days. I know the feeling. I really do. I thought I had as well there, uh, just for the sec. Just for the sec. Jack, you signed up for 12 weeks, man. Fair play to you. Just make sure you get something out of it. With all stuff like that. It doesn't necessarily have to be exactly what you signed up for, but as long as you, you get something out of it. Always good. Jack, you need to lose weight and you love eating. I was talking to, talking to a couple of friends about this. <laughs> Is this normal? I don't like eating. I can't remember the last time I had something I actually enjoyed. Even stuff that I used to like. I've gone through a stage of... I'm only eating because if I don't, I won't be around. But I genuinely don't actually enjoy the process of eating. Do I need to speak to someone about this? Strange. Uh, how do we know? No freezing and disappearing yet. I'm using my PC, not my laptop, but I'm having to use hotkeys on the the keyboard rather than the stream deck to trigger things. So it's gone all right, really. The camera's still being a tit, but not much I can do about that. Yep, all you do is your best. Yeah, don't you like eating apples and kale? Also, oh, your biggest insecurity and make it your nickname, of course. Uh, is your smell or taste affected? Nope. Just not enjoying eating at all. Don't look forward to it. I know some people live to eat. I'm the opposite way around. Just genuinely eat because if you don't, you're not going to be here much longer. But obviously, I'm also I'm just under a hundred kilos, so it's not like I'm starving. I'm not. Wasting away to nothing. Kale is disgusting. I had kale in a, a long, long time. I can't remember whether it was nice or horrible. Kale with parsnip mashed together. Stomp pot. Yep. Fat head is copper. Heads, yep. Got a good voice, Elvis. And eat a lot. Hunger. Yep. Doing all right so far. Is that with the stream or the eating? Or both? Not even dark chocolate. I've not had any dark chocolate for a while. I have got loads of chocolate in the house though. I just, again, not really, not really got rounds of eating stuff. I need to go and get something when I finish this. I also need to go and pick my daughter up. She just texts me and asks me, so, yeah. Um, just not enjoying it. I don't know if I need to speak to a, a therapist and find out why that is. I've got something going on in my head that's stopping me from enjoying it. Do I need to find something that excites me again? Do I need to start eating hot stuff 
more hot chili-ish stuff. I don't know. Jackie, you're trying to think of your biggest insecurities and you can't think of any. I would say that's a, a win, if that's the case, if you've got no insecurities. Only one inadvertent button, yes. That's not an inadvertent button, though. No, that's, unfortunately, I don't want that on a loop, so. When I go to a different thing and come back, it's coming up, it's coming up, that will be on there still, because I can't get rid of it. But it'll play once and then disappear, so. Yeah, pain in the ass. Ali, you don't eat any veg or salads at all. Do you have the Irish mixed grill? Roasties, boiled potatoes, chips, mash. Yes, I went there, I went there, sorry. Uh, she mentioned to me, doctor, about my lack of food. It's not necessarily a lack of food, Jackie. It's, um, I'm, not, I'm not enjoying it. I'm not looking forward to it. There's not nothing that I've eaten that I thought, wow, that tasted nice. Plus, I need to be careful because my cholesterol came back as slightly high. So maybe that that might be what's on my mind. Um, and now everything I look at, I'm thinking, is this going to be the thing that sends me over the edge? I don't know. But look at me, I'm not small. I am not small by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah. 15 and a half stone, just under 100 kilos, so, you know, I could possibly afford to lose a little bit of weight, but I also don't want to make sure, of, or I want to make sure that I'm not doing anything that's going to affect me in the long term. So I'm going to have to start eating something a bit, a bit better for me. Yeah, spend the day with Safi, I'll find one for you, definitely. You need a cheese pizza, but on a rare occasion. Now, I've not had a pizza in absolutely ages. I don't know, if I order one of them, will that be something I enjoy? But then I also want to stay away from eating stuff like that. Pizza's going to have cheese on it and processed meats. Try to stick away from that. Although there's only so many sunflower seeds you can eat without wanting to punch the fucking postman or something, isn't it? So I'm, after, I'm definitely going to have to speak to someone about it. Like you're not big on veg, but you do like you do like it, but you eat a lot of fruit. Fruit, yeah, is th I've been trying to eat a bit more of that because I, I don't trust fruit, but I'm going to have to eat more of it. The lack of enjoyment. Yeah, I will speak to someone about it because it's just not. Don't eat uh, potatoes per se, only as chips. I am sick of potatoes. I really am. I've had enough of them to last me a lifetime. Every time I see them, I just think, nah, not for me. So the week we can wake you up for raspberries and cloudberries anytime. And that being said, sleep is sacred to you. You must really like raspberries and cloudberries. Raspberries, I must admit, I absolutely adore them. Why haven't I got any in the house? That's what I'm going to have. I need natural yoghurt, raspberries. I'm going to try that tonight. That might be the thing, the saving grace. Porridge. Natural yoghurt and then ras raspberries are fantastic. Yeah, that's the start. I'm going to have that. I'll eat, you'd eat fruit, but you've got to be in the humour for it. Very understandable. Very understandable. And we used to love bacon and oysters. Again, everyone loves bacon. Even vegetarians love bacon. I get offered it all the time, and I just I won't eat it. It does nothing for me at the moment. Weird. Oh, in scones with white chocolate raspberry and white chocolate scones. Now you're talking. Yeah, I don't trust fruit. The reason why, have a look at anything that eats just fruit. All fructivores. They're all small, massive eyes. The heart beats, it's like that, and you live for about a day. Then look at herbivores. They're all massive, 
live for years, very slow paced life. So to me, don't be um I'm trying to think what they are, those little fruit fly or something that lasts for a day, wakes up, eats fruit, shags and then dies. Be an elephant, be a turtle, a tortoise, um, a hippo, be one of them. Live for years and be chilled. Don't trust fruit. There you go, I said it. Never had oysters, you don't think you'd handle them. I, I couldn't, I know I couldn't. You'd eat natural yoghurt over fresh fruit, Jackie, I would as well. What's a cloud berry? It's like a normal berry, but, you know... It, it's housed elsewhere. They taste like salty slime, but it's so much better than it sounds. It couldn't be any worse. How do we, that sounds like hell. Next time I'm in Tesco, pick a fruit you never tried and eat that. After you've paid, obviously. I will do. I will try that. Is it a goose cog? I don't think it is. Is it a cloud breeze? Uh, I seem to remember me Swedish friend talks about them quite a lot. Eating oysters is like having a heavy cold. Snort one up and swallow it. Just a bit salty. Eek. Mandy, one oyster, never again. Cloud breeze, like a small orange raspberry blackberry cross. Called Kripe Bram. Right. No oysters. Tesco's oranges are amazing at the moment. Um... My mum keeps buying them for my dad. I don't know which ones they are, but they smell unbelievable. When he's eating them, the whole house, you can smell it across the entire house. It's not a massive house, but it's not small by any stretch of the imagination. One orange, you can smell it everywhere. It's mad. I'm going to have to press a button. I'm going to have to press a button. There we go. Oh, does, has this worked? Let's have a look. We have tech issues. The stream decks are not working. Not my problem, though. It's going, it's going up, it's going up, it's going up, it's going up. It's there. It's there, I told you. Cheers, Horace. You absolute knob. Not your problem. Not your problem. I thought we were a team. There's no I in team, but there is a U in court. No, I better not say that. Those oranges are either from Spain or South Africa. I would think so. Um, if you've seen southern Spain, it is just one massive greenhouse. Well, it's not one greenhouse. It's six bajillion of them, but it's pretty much one big continuous greenhouse. Yep. Seville, of course, very famous for their oranges. Naranjas. Horace, nice book passing, yes. The evil sod. Right, well, I'm going to have to go with some knackered and I need to pick Jess up from town because she's out on the, um, the aisle. So, let's very quickly see whether this works or not. I'm going to press some buttons to see if they work. Dad joke, yep. Yeah. Sneeze break. It's going up. It's coming up as now off. Ooh, matron. Wolfie, ball, and, of course, to finish off. That's all we've got time for this evening, so it's good night from me. And it's good night from him. Good night. Good night. Good night. And that's that.